remember what the haters talking about. What's up, family? Luke, a.k.a. Uncle Luke, provided some insight on how the beef between he, Dr. Dre, and Snoop came about. He said that he actually started the beef. He had made some comments about them, and they answered. He answered back. He said that, you know, they had the better track. They had the better song, so they won but he talked about winning the physical confrontation at Jack the Rapper in Atlanta. I wonder why, I wonder is that the reason why there's no longer a Jack the Rapper? In any event, Lou talked about the whole tough guy image thing in hip hop. How a lot of artists talk about that life, they're really not about that life, but they talk about it. He said he never talked about it, even though he lived it, he never talked about it because he never wanted to incriminate himself. Now, I get that. If you're gonna talk about that life and you are about that life or you live that life, you gotta kinda say certain things in a way that you don't incriminate yourself. You gotta well, I ain't going to tell you exactly how to do it, but you can't just say I did this, this person, that person, and name names and all that kind of stuff. You got to switch it up and try to find some balance at the same time to where it's still, the story is still, it maintains the integrity of the story and at the same time not incriminate yourself. Uh, we'll talk about that in another episode. But Here's the reason why I want to talk about this particular story. I was one of those dudes who lived that life. And it took a long time for me to understand how to really move around in this music industry. I did not understand that there was a line between music industry and real life. Basically, if somebody did this, I did that. It didn't matter that I had a number one record on the charts. I could not wait to get back to Houston to do a drive-by. That's what my head was because all I can think of is that somebody in violation, I got to get them. It don't matter. I got to get them. I'm on stage, somebody in the audience clowning, acting a fool, jump off the stage, put a good whooping on them, ding, ding, fries and shake, get back on stage, finish the show. Sound man tripping. <laughs> Sound man got it a few times. Just wild and, just wild and hot. Money ain't right. Get the money right, man. Get the money right get that money right, uh, I'm going to take off. And I did not understand that I was costing myself valuable relationships because somebody, all, and, I, and I justified everything by looking at it like somebody was in violation. There's an old saying that you got to pick your battles. And I just did not understand that. It doesn't mean that you allow people to get away with mistreating you or doing you bad or rolling on your people. It ain't, that ain't what I'm talking about at all. I'm saying that like Luke was saying, you got people that do that. You got people that take care of those type of issues. You don't have to push yourself on front street like that. If you're on that type of level, you cannot chunk yourself like that. You got to let other people do what they do. And I had one of those Mr. Big mentalities like, I did this to you. I, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> you know, and it wasn't because I wanted to show up. It was just that, you know, I was just raised like that. Like if you have a problem with somebody, you know, you do the work yourself. You put the work in yourself. 
Uh, you don't wait on nobody else. Uh, so again, it took me a while to understand how to move around in the music industry. Things would happen, and man, before before I could get off the stage or before I could get back home or wherever I was going, whatever it was, the news would be all over the music industry. Like, man, Willie D did this, man, Willie D did that, Willie D did this. And I did not understand that I was costing myself relationships. Not just business relationships, personal relationships also. Because people just don't want to be associated with all that damn drama. Luke gave it up to Suge. He was saying Suge could have been a great, great executive. He said he was good and he was good at what he did. He had a great, he said, nose for the business. And everybody, I think, can, can, can agree to that. But he was saying that, you know, he made some moves that that cost him his artists, cost him his career, cost him his freedom, his money, because he didn't understand how to get away from that street thing, that tough guy thing, man. Like, it can only last for so long. You can be a tough guy, but you can't walk around with that on your chest. You can't walk around with it on your sleeve. It gon it's only gonna last for so long. And once you get in a position to whereas people don't need you anymore and you don't have that power that you once had, man, people ain't nobody gonna mess with you. No more. I knew when Shug was doing what he was doing, once he fell off, I was like, man, they ain't never letting Shug back in. They ain't gonna never let him back in because people were afraid of Shug. I mean, really, really afraid. Some of you new jacks don't really know. Some of y'all that's in your teens and 20s, y'all don't really know. Uh, I felt the energy. I knew, well, no Shug, personally. I've been around Shug. And people were just like petrified of Shug. And so the moment that Shug got in trouble and he started falling off financially. He lost death row records. He lost his artist. Man, people were like, man, if I could help it, I will never do business with that dude again. And the executives, boy, they make sure the big guys, the big wigs, they gonna make sure uh, we'll never give him a distribution deal like that again because they're they're gonna make sure that he never, ever again is able to come into power the way he did. Once he got on top and he had Snoop, he had he had Pac, he had the Dog Pound, he had Lady of Rage, he had all of those artists and they were winning. They had no choice but to do business with him. But the moment he fell off, it was like, Choo, lock the doors, you know, put the locks on him, it's over. It's over. We'll never let him get in again. So that's how it is. So. You just got to learn that, that, you know, if you're going to do, if you're going to be in the streets, be in the streets. But if you're going to get into this music industry, get into the music in industry and conduct yourself like business people, like business people. And I'm saying business people twice because I, I think y'all can read between the lines. I ain't got to say it all the way out. But, and go back to, and go back to Tupac. Speaking of Tupac. You know, Tupac was revealed on the streets. Them dudes in the streets loved Tupac. The hood dudes loved Tupac because Tupac served as an example of who they were and who they could be, who they could become. But should I mean, but uh, Pac crossed the civilian line. Once Pac crossed that line, the gangsters was like green light. Once he crossed that line, it was like, man, he out here doing what we doing. You know, they can't respect that and they're not going to respect that. you got to carry yourself in a different way. Again, I ain't saying let nobody walk on you. Never let nobody walk over you. you got to handle your business. But it ain't what you do, it's how you do it. That's the moral of the story. No more talk. What the talking about?